and welcome to the 2020 commencement ceremony. We would like to take a moment to thank all who helped us get where we are today. We certainly could not have done it without your love and support. At this time, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. I'm so thankful that we have the opportunity to celebrate in a close traditional way this evening, and I hope that you're all excited to be here. With the help of Thomas Beck and many more of your family and friends are able to watch from live stream from their homes. We are thankful for them, and we are thankful that Mr. Beck could help more people be a part of the celebration this evening. Around the stadium tonight, there are also faculty, staff, administration, and Board of Education members. On their behalf, congratulations. We are all proud of you. As much as you are physically able this evening, try to remain seated in your assigned seats. You can already see elements that are non-traditional, and we are appreciative of your patience while we work with Miami County Public Health on parameters of the ceremony and gathering together. There is a process for exiting the stadium. Please remain seated at the end of the ceremony. We appreciate your cooperation so we can celebrate your students. Before I go any further, graduates, you have one last test to pass. Sitting around you this evening are your parents, family, and friends, and some supporters are home watching the event live. But on your journey to this moment, these people have supported you and encouraged you. And for those reasons, stand up, turn towards your family, and please give them a loud and rowdy round of applause. members of the class of 2020 grow into confident, persevering young women and men, bearing witness when students make a significant choice about their future, whether it's military, college, or career, is something really special. And this year is no exception. We have several students enlisting in the military to serve their country immediately following graduation. Those students are selflessly heading into the unknown, willing to make the greatest sacrifice. We also have many students leaving the union and heading directly into the workforce. Many have signed contracts, and many more have already started their industry-related careers. And finally, we have many students head to college in pursuit of business, education, medical, criminal justice, graphic arts degrees, and many others. All three pathways honorable, and all three necessary. On each of your pathways, you will find much, much success. Along the way, you will also face challenges. However, what I know about you as members of the class of 2020 is that you are strong, you persevere, and you are confident. And as a whole, you have strong beliefs and convictions. You don't give up when facing adversity. These traits will serve you well in the future. My advice to you, members of the class of 2020, is to do what you have always done when you face challenges. Never, never give up. You've overcome countless obstacles throughout your years of students some small and some large, but each time you've confidently stood tall and have always overcome the hurdle. As you leave Milton Union to embark upon your pathway, remember to never, never give up. Congratulations to the class of 2020, and may you find much success in your future. This year's valedictorian is Megan Yates. Megan is the daughter of Jennifer and Ryan Yates. Throughout her career at Milton Union, Megan participated in a variety of extracurricular activities, both in and out of the school building. She was a member of National Honor Society and a freshman mentor. In addition to these activities, she has given back to her community through volunteer programs. These include Shoots for the Shoeless, Dayton Children's Wayfinding, Library Reading Enrichment, and Kindergarten Classroom Helper. While pursuing her high school diploma, Megan also took college classes. She graduated with honors from Sinclair Community College with a liberal arts and sciences associates of arts degree. Megan plans to attend University of Cincinnati in the fall 
majoring in early childhood education. Congratulations, Megan. Graduates, faculty, family, and friends, I am honored to be a part of this ceremony today. To my fellow graduates, we have dreamt of this day from the moment we were pinned with that little red kindergarten badge that read no meeting class of 2020. Though this moment has always felt forever away, none of us could have ever imagined our final, bulldog, final months as Bulldogs would end like this. These past few months, we have had so many typical senior things stripped away. No spring seasons, no senior prom, no typical senior awards banquet, no senior picnic, and no senior clap out. We had to face the reality that this moment would not be typical when we were asked to vote on how we felt graduation should occur. We've all spent hundreds of hours working towards this moment, towards our piece of paper and a handshake, and now we don't even get our handshakes. Our minds have become so clouded with everything that we were missing that many of us have forgotten what experience we shared and have lost sight of what's come. Many of us did get at least one senior night. We all got our last Friday night lights. We all got our last flow building sessions and our final homecoming. These last few months, we got to experience how strongly the known community believes small town big tradition. Our community has done everything in their power to ensure we are celebrated and make it known how lovely we are. For that, I'm thankful to be a part of this small town. As we all move on to the next chapters of our lives, I hope all of us are able to take away from this crazy situation that every moment should be appreciated as we all now know, life can change in a moment's notice. As I close my speech, I would like to say a few, a say a few thank yous. Thank you to my parents and my brother for constantly pushing me towards my full potential. Thank you to Mrs. Bayston and Mrs. Virginia for giving me a place to discover my passion and being there for me as mentors. Thank you to Mrs. Brady and Mrs. Valentine for, for being amazing class advisors. And lastly, thank you to all my classmates for giving me an unforgettable experience at my own school. As we have heard many times, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Class of 2020, we did it and we did it in a way that no one will ever forget. is Hannah Nutley. Hannah is the daughter of Bill and Joan Nutley. Throughout her high school career, Hannah participated in a variety of extracurriculars. She was a four-year member of the softball team and a three-year member of the National Honor Society. Additionally, Hannah was a freshman-focused mentor, a counselor for the, the junior, junior team in institute, and the treasurer for the class of 2020. Hannah also participated in a variety of service opportunities throughout her high school career. Hannah has sworn into the United States Marine Corps and will be heading to boot camp after graduation. Congratulations, Hannah, and thank you for your service. Those who stand for nothing fall for everything. Though it is not absolutely certain who should be credited with this phrase, most historians come to a consensus that it is Alexander Hamilton. The Founding Fathers intended for this country to be a place where the Americans could stand up for themselves because they did not want to feel controlled by anyone any longer. The meaning of this very phrase is the reason I am where I am today, as well as the reason I am my future today. I want to serve my country because there is no other place in this world where we will be given the freedom to defend our beliefs as it is, is given to us in the United States of America. Hamilton's quote is not just something I live by but it is something that is ingrained in my character, possibly to a fault sometimes. Regardless, I believe this phrase because it is true. This is something that Hamilton and I have in common. Before I tell the story, I would like to give a shout out to Emily Peck for this title. Alexander Hamilton was the very prominent founding father of our country. He was given a rough start in life. In fact, he was not even born in the United States so his accomplishments are even more extravagant. Hamilton wore many different hats throughout his lifetime. His determination and intelligence led him first to be a distinguished soldier in the Continental Army under General George Washington. 
After this, he served as a delegate in the Constitutional Convention, where he led a different kind of ballot, a ballot that would eventually get the Constitution ratified. Later, he was appointed the first Secretary of Treasury. Even though this seems random, I do have reasons for telling Hamilton's story. Alexander Hamilton did not achieve all his successes yeah, without standing up for what he believed in. However, at the same time, he also did not achieve his goals without creating enemies. Throughout his political career, he met Aaron Burr as an opponent many times. These men grew to hate each other through the multiple conflicts. In fact, they eventually decided on a duel to settle their differences. Unlike many other duels at this time, the Burr and Hamilton duel actually resulted in a casualty. Most other duels were settled before a shot was fired, but this one was different. There are two different narratives that are generally believed. The first is that when the two turned to face each other, Hamilton realized that this was not the proper way to settle things, and purposefully shot above Burr's head. In turn, Burr shot Hamilton in the stomach. The other belief is that Hamilton was aiming for Burr and missed, to which Burr responded again by shooting in the stomach. Hamilton died the next day. Either way the story goes, Hamilton stood up for himself and his beliefs so fervently that it cost him his life. Now, with Hamilton's story being told, I understand that this is a more dramatic outcome of standing up for what you believe in. However, the point that I'm trying to make is that standing up for what you can believe in can be costly, as well as create enemies, but the rewards far outweigh the risks. Hamilton stood up for his beliefs and built a very successful life for himself by doing so. It did have costs, but he died an American hero. Standing up for what you believe in is important because nobody in life is ever going to be there for you or be able to take care of you in the way that you can for yourself. Therefore, it is important that you stand up for yourself as well as your beliefs. Trust me, the rewards far outweigh the rest. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome the class officers. Looking back on all four years of high school, we are going to start with our freshman year, what we thought was going to end up being one of the craziest. Here we were, ready to walk a few steps down the hallway towards the double glass doors. It was a little scary at first because we were going from our top dog position in middle school all the way back down to the bottom of the totem pole. We started our high school career right with freshman focus camp where we met our mentors who helped us navigate and adapt to the crazy new chapter of life. They helped us adjust to the workload and expectations of our teachers, which were slightly different than that of our middle school teachers. The first few weeks were a little stressful, but we managed and adapted as best as we could. We were shocked when just a few weeks into our freshman year, we got put on lockdown. We were a little afraid to get first because we realized that it was not planned. Our nerves were soon calmed when we learned that it was just because some of the eighth graders decided to eat ghost peppers and had to be taken to the hospital. Some of us were a little more upset about this than others because we were supposed to have a pep rally and it had to be canceled. After the shock of that incident, which was the first in itself, we started all of our normal high school first. We were extra excited about football games because we finally got a place in the student section, even though they were not the best seats. We all had a lot of fun in the student section that year with our new chants such as singing the SpongeBob theme song and shouting Dustin's mustache. The baby powder clouds also made a quick appearance this year. However, they did not return due to possible safety issues. Then came the long awaited homecoming week. We had no idea what we were getting into with world building, bulletin boards, and dress up days. After not very, winning very much of homecoming week during freshman year, we decided to come back our next three years with a vengeance. At the end of this week, we also experienced our trip first official high school dance where we all had blocks. After homecoming week, our next big shock was exams. We did not know what to expect and we were all a little stressed knowing this was now part of our semester grade. Maybe some of us chose to study and maybe some of us did not, but either way, we survived those two thanks to the help of many kudos and quizlets. We were rewarded with our much needed winter break. 
After winter break had passed, we came to back to our second semester and got pumped up for our first dance marathon, where we danced, sang, and partied late into the night. We all had fun with the games and dances that we took part in and looked forward to participating in the following year. As the winter ended and spring showed up, we continued to push through our classes and finish our exams. We were excited for summer, but also to see what new beginnings our sophomore year might bring. In 2017, we became sophomores and our lives continued to change. With the year of high school experience under our belt, we became more confident in ourselves and our work. We learned how to succeed in, on our own without the assistance of our mentors and became more responsible as students and as people. This year, we were no longer at the bottom. We took a new role in helping guide the freshmen as well as continuing to learn from our upperclassmen. As we had quickly learned, our classes became more difficult as well as more fun. In the classroom, we dissected worms and frogs with Miss Harlow and had toga parties with Miss Noble. Many of us also had the pleasure of watching CNN 10 with Mr. Grudis or Mr. Grapplin. We took help with Mr. Bigson and dreaded watching the birth video. We also learned CPR and became certified. While some of us had previously joined a few clubs or organizations, Sophomore year was the first year we were eligible to be a part of National Honor Society. For those accepted, we learned a great deal about leadership and responsibility, as well as the importance of serving others. These skills would be the ones to make us great role models in our future. While continuing to make friendships throughout high school, we attended many school events. Some of these events included football games, show choir competitions, and school dances. We also got to watch our upperclassmen participate in Calico and were anxious to be a part of it the following year. We attended our second homecoming dance and some attended their first prom. The week before the dance, our Interact Club put together a mock crash. With the help of our local fire department and police department, as well as some senior Interact members as actors, we were able to display the importance of making safe choices while driving and the effects of a situation gone wrong. During homecoming week, we became a little more competitive, wanting to break the winning streak of the class of 2018. We improved our bulletin boards and made an extravagant piggy bank float for the parade. We also learned during that week that PVC pipe is apparently not accessible to everyone and that we would lose points from putting it on our bulletin board. Even after encountering this setback, we did not give up. We continued to better ourselves for the years to come. In preparation for our future responsibilities, we had many fundraisers. The other class officers and student council members would agree that this was one of our more important fundraising years where we would have to prepare to put on the father-daughter dance, as well as host the junior town for the following year. We did a car wash, worked the alumni banquet, and helped with powder puff to raise money for our class. This is one of the years that seemed to fly by the quickest. We began to think about our futures, although graduation still seems so far away. Through all the lessons learned and memories made this year, we were ready to become upperclassmen. Little did we know that it would be the last time we would have an official last day of school. While well, I think we can all agree that the year was challenging, through the good and the bad, we also made many great memories. For many of us, junior year was a year of change. We parted ways with some of our peers as they went to CTC and Edison classes. However, we all managed to stay in touch by attending things like float building and football games. Our giant turtle float won the Spirit Week contest, which was followed by a homecoming victory for the football team. Junior year was when we officially became upperclassmen and had more of a responsibility to be positive leaders. Some students chose to work daily with the freshmen as part of the freshman focus program, while others were exceptional influences for their sports teams and clubs like National Honor Society and Interact, as well as JPI. For the two years prior, we had watched the classes above us experience the things we were so excited to do and it was finally our turn. We moved up a few rows in the student section of football games and got to see many of our classmates play for the varsity team. 
Later in the fall came powder puff. While we weren't the best powder puff team built in that scene, we all came together and had a great time playing. Prom at the Orlot Estate came around in the spring, and we were thrilled to see our years of fundraising pay off, which of course was made even better with DJ Willie's break dancing and music. Between all of the pep rallies, sporting events, and other fun times, our third year also brought challenging classes. Many of us got our first real taste of AP and CCP classes, which required lots of hard work and dedication in and out of the classroom. Of course, having great teachers along the way helped us all greatly. Mr. Skyle's chemistry class was in many of our schedules, where we politely laugh at his science jokes that few of us understood, but of course it all paid off when we were able to make homemade ice cream at the end of the year. My song's side class taught us about conditioning by spraying our classmates in the face with water, and as many of us know, math class with Mr. Solkowski was always interesting, especially when we shared about our weekends every Monday. These challenging classes weren't always the best part of our days, but they taught us about hard work and helped us prepare for our futures. Junior year was also when we really began to think about our futures. We prepped to take the ACT and began to visit colleges. We watched as the grade that had been above us since kindergarten prepared for graduation, and it really began to sink in that we would be in that position next. Junior year closed suddenly with one of the biggest challenges we faced, the Memorial Day tornadoes. In the following days that would have been exam week, we learned some of the most valuable lessons we can learn in life. We learned firsthand the importance of a community coming together in times of adversity. Many of our students stepped up in great ways to help out. Students came together as quickly as the following morning to begin forming groups and finding locations to serve. Many community members were also generous enough to donate supplies and food to support the volunteers. While we may not always remember things like the quadratic formula or how to do a geometry proof, we will always remember the lessons we learned during this time of adversity. We eventually started to get back to normal life and summer break began. Summer was filled with students taking a mission trip to Belize, family vacations, hanging out with friends, and more. We began to schedule our senior composites, brainstorm parking spot design ideas, attend fall sports practices, and more as we anxiously waited for our senior year to begin. We couldn't wait to see what our final year at Milton Union had in store for us. Senior year, the year we looked forward to our entire lives. The year of our senior prom, senior picnic, senior skip day, government days, and graduation. The year that once seemed like it was forever away, but just like that, here it was. Coming into our senior year, we knew we were about to be hit with many bittersweet endings. Our last games, matches, and competitions, our last time in the student section, our last float building, and even walking through the halls for the very last time without even knowing it was the last time. All the hard work we have put in for the past 12 years is finally coming to an end as we were preparing for the next chapter in our lives. Months before we were hit with the coronavirus, we had a class officer meeting discussing what we wanted our message to be in our graduation speech. Without any hesitation, we chose perseverance. We chose this very strong word to symbolize us. We are the definition of perseverance, if you ask me. We were born in a time of complete tragedy and were in high school during the pandemic. We came together and persevered through the tornadoes last spring, just like we were going to continue to persevere through this very tragic time. Everyone has always said the class of 2020 has vision, but what exactly does that mean? To me, it means that we are a class that sees through our hardships. We see through what we've been through and together we get through it. We look out for one another, we see if one of us is struggling, and we go out of our way to do something about it. We look for ways to help one another, we see each other. Although we will all be soon going our separate ways, we will always have a special bond that holds us together, which is no meeting. Without our soon be alma mater, we wouldn't have the friends, experiences, or lessons we picked up during the course of our time here. We are going to be the ones in the stories we tell our children and grandchildren about our high school experiences. 
We all have made an impact on each other's lives that we can take and learn from. To Milton Union High School in the class of 2020, thank you. Good luck to my fellow graduates on however the next chapter of your life plays out. See you later. Dr. Ritchie, Board of Education members, administrators, faculty, parents, and guests, I hereby certify that the following students have met the graduation requirements set forth by the Milton Union Exempted Village School District, as well as the State of Ohio, and are members in good standing of the Milton Union Class of 2020. Before I call names of graduates, I'd like to remind you that as a courtesy to all families, please hold applause until the end. Megan Ryan Gates. <laughs> Hannah Renee Nutley. <laughs> Isabel Marie Mortar. Laura Page Billing. Rachel Catherine Thompson. Andrew Thomas Baker. Luke Allen Barnes. Ariana Lynn Basil. Kevin Michael Beatley. Mark Arnold Bell. Thomas Felt. Addison Taylor Black. Joshua Wayne Black. Dustin Wayne Thor. Carson Harold Brown. Justin Emerson Brown. Mackenzie Ann Brown. Woo! 
Ryan Crockett. Peyton Chase Brown. Nathan Jeffrey Brumbaugh. William Benjamin Burns. Go Kelsey Madison Bush. Denver Ray Castle. Caitlin Pearl Compton Ellie Marie Cooper Joel Cameron Press Deanna Lee Crumb Sydney Nicole Danes Maya Jo Ann Evans Austin Michael Izerski. Allison Marie Freisauer. Caden Eric Galentine. Karma Raquel Gillette. <laughs> Milani Nicole Good. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Catherine Grace Gowdy.
William Edward Grisha. Jacob Allen Griffith. Jacob Robert Griffith. Shannon Marie Griffith. Elizabeth Brown. Christopher Daniel Halcom. We go, Christopher! Richard Joseph Edward Harris. Caden James Hilling. Thomas Gerald Walter Hawk. Emily Ann Hornberger. Mitchell Eicher. <laughs> Megan Christine Jacobs. Troy Glenn Johnson. Alicia Marie Johnston. Marie Jones. Brady Thomas Jones. Caitlin Elizabeth Jones. Aaron Daniel Kaiser. Amos Levi Nick. Webb Russell Kress. Caleb Nathaniel Larkin. Woo! 
Brandon Luke Levy. Emma Sue Layman. Nathan Ray Gibbons. Elizabeth Michelle Oakes. Emily Rose Peck. Elijah James Perkins. Nicholas Lee Radcliffe Fever. Brandon Lee Raider. Jamie Kathleen Razor. Kimberly Jeanette Riquelme. Ryan Joseph Schlecht. Mark
Jonathan Raymond Searcy. Malayla Riley Shaw. Sierra Faith Smith. Shane Patrick Sowers. Andrew Robert Stamper. Dylan Richard Glenn Stanley. Tierney Kevin Rose Stringer. Brittany Ann Sir. Alexis Chantel Summers. Kaya Lynn Schwartzstrauber. Haley Arlene Nicole Taylor. Madison Kendall Taylor. Jackson Thomas B. Justin Tyler Thomas. Paige Dean Twaits. Ethan Fritz Tennerman. John Unger. Brandon Robert Weber. Christina Maha White. Michael James Whitmer. What is that, Michael? <laughs> River Lennon Wick.
I'd like to invite the class officers up for turning of the taxes. Thank you so much for your patience and cooperation this evening. 